All right. <clears throat> it's good to see you all. It's good to be back. Oh, rough morning. You ever had a bad morning? So, like, the, um, the dog... Um, so the new house is, 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 is spectacular. Um, but my, my dog, <clears throat> all good stories begin with, but the dog. So the dog and his partner in crime, the poodle, uh, ascertained that there were chocolate chip cookies on the counter. And, uh, you know, while everybody was working, he and the poodle, thought it was wise to knock the cookies off the counter and then help themselves to them. And this morning, um, uh, uh, I woke to, up to a, uh, a slew of sick Thor everywhere. So if he was full of it, he's not full of it anymore. Um, so that was my morning. So thank you for joining me on this, a poopy morning for me. Um, I hope that you are having a better morning than I am. And um, I'm very, 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 very glad to be back in your midst. Um, I think Terry Lynn, the move went okay. Um, everything is in the garage. Uh, most of the boxes are in the garage. We had um, a lot of people who helped out. And um, it was basically uh, two different things. We were been living in an apartment for about two years. But most of our stuff was in storage. And so, um, yeah. So the, the, the dogs are happy with the exception of, um, they were happier until this morning. Not so happy today. Um, you know, intestinal, but, uh, um, you could say that, um, while Thor reflected for us the gift of your sins can be forgiven, but you still need the con you still suffer the consequences, the earthly consequences of your actions. If you eat chocolate, um, you know your your master can forgive you, but uh, your human can forgive you, um, but you're still going to have the squirts. All right, well we got to get off this biological subject and get to the scriptures. I understand the bearded one stopped with um verse 20. I'm going to kick up the size of the screen a little bit for you so that you um are having a better time of it. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning everyone. All right. Jesus and his high priestly prayer. Um his high priestly prayer. And I thought that Pastor Finker did such an amazing job yesterday of, of laying out exactly that when this Jesus is praying for you, he's praying for me, and such a prayer is always answered. He's praying for us. And, and if God prays for his people, we can pray for his people too. Um, how, how, how comforting and how wonderful that God prays for his people, that the son of God prays for his people. And we too are given to pray for others as well. That was Friday and yesterday. I don't know. Anyway. Um, and, and the, and the bearded one will be back with you on, on Monday. Um, I do not ask, let's back up a verse. The great thing about verse 20 is that it's right before um, 19 and 18. Have you sent me as you apostled me into the universe? I also apostle them into the universe. And so the son of man, the, the son of God is sent to save sinners. And then he sends his men to deliver his gifts to his people. All right, you've got it. You've got it going on both ways. Um, we, uh, your pastor is sent because Jesus was sent. Jesus was sent and then he sent your pastor to you. And he could have sent you any pastor, but he sent the particular pastor that you have to the particular place where you are at the particular time in which we live in 
for maximum gift. So you may look at your pastor and be like, you're a stupid idiot. Okay. But he's the stupid idiot that the Lord called to be your stupid idiot for the delivery of his words. And we had this sort of, um, we had Balaam's ass a few chapters ago. And if God can speak through an ass, he can speak through me. What comfort. What comfort. What comfort. And for their sake. Verse 19. And for their sake, I holy myself. That they may be holied in the truth. Now, no, notice they're not holy in and of themselves. They're not holy all by themselves. They don't make themselves holy. He holies them. He, he, son of God's them with his holy life and his bitter sufferings and death on the cross. The prayer, the Lord sets himself to the task of dying so that we might be saved. So that we might be saved. He sets himself to the task of dying so that we could be saved. I love it. I absolutely love it. And you should love it too. You should love it too. The Lord sets himself um, for, for the sake, for the purpose of of being such a God for you that he gives up his life. He holies himself so that you would be holy. And then your holiness and your righteousness and all that you are and would be is all connected to and joined to and run, run up with him. Oh, I made a huge mistake. Oh, I've made another huge mistake. What am I doing? There we go. It's all connected to him. Without him, you can do nothing. Now I got the Latin back. I feel so much better now with my with my Latin underneath um, uh, the text. All right, verse 20. I do not ask concerning myself, but concerning those who believe through the words, who will believe through their word. Whose word? Who's the there? What's the there there? Who's the there there? And the answer is the there there is the apostles, the ones who he sends. Okay? The ones who he, uh, who he sends. Uh, thanks, Erica. It's it's been a it's been quite the morning, and it's all Thor's fault. It's it's really I mean, and he was trying to tell me, but he spent the last forty eight hours since we got to the house. Um, there's a dog on the in the yard next door. There's a dog in uh, um, in the yard next door, and their kids. And so he spent the last forty eight hours basically acting like. I've got to go outside. Intruder alert. And. Yeah. So I didn't even notice that he was sick. So it's, it's my fault too. Um, so. But any story which begins the dog and his partner in crime, the poodle, um, ends poorly. Father, the ones you've given to me, 
I just, I want them that they may be with me where I am. Um, and th th this is, he wants you to be saved, to see my glory that you've given me because you've loved me before the foundation of the world. Now, his glory is the glory of the cross. His glory. Yes, I did notice. Uh, I did not notice the textural variant on that, uh, Pastor Rake. What's the um, what's the textural variant? Where did I put my Metzger? Where did I put my Metzger? <laughs> Bear with me here as I find my Metzger. Uh... I would have to look later, Pastor Rake. Um, Metzger doesn't have it in his commentary, really. Uh, there's a future versus a uh, present. Interesting. Interesting. Um, huh. Huh. Interesting. Anyway. Um, we're going to have to set that one aside until I can look at it a little bit better when I'm not having a poopy morning. Um, the ones you've given me, th this is so important. He would that they would see his glory. And we know from earlier that his glory is the cross. And we know that he longs for them to see him saving them. But it's not going to happen. But it will happen. This prayer is answered. This prayer is answered on the last day as we see one having been slain. Now, you could read this as to see him in all his glory, but in all his glory, he still looks as a lamb having been slain. And notice we're given from the, from the father to the son so that where he is, we might be also. To see his glory, the glory that he's had before the foundation of the world, the glory of the, of the slain lamb. And this foundation of the world business is used in Ephesians as well, isn't it? Um, by St. Paul. He chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and blameless in him. Before there was a universe, before let there be light, God wanted you. And God told his son, to die for you. And that, by the way, is the answer to the eternal question of why there's the, the tree in the midst of the garden. The answer to that is so that Jesus would die for you. And anyone who gives you any other um, answer other than so that Jesus could die for you is speculating. Because the answer in the text itself is that so Jesus would die for you. Ooh, the present makes the statement definitive of all. The future simply designates. Interesting. I'm going to have to look at that text note. But he longs for us to see him in all his glory. And in all his glory is the cross. that they all may be one just as this is a huge verse it's a huge verse in the ecumenical movement it's a huge verse that's misused today it's a huge words that uh, a huge word that is just trampled on today 
that they all um, that they all may be one, just as you, Father, um, in me and I in you. That they also may be in us. So that the world may believe that you've sent me. And so it drags that they may be one. Now, their oneness is in truth, which was earlier. Sanctify them in the truth. Their oneness is not, they agreed to disagree. Okay? Their oneness is in 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 the truth, the truth of the Son of God having been glorified on the cross, the truth that God saves sinners, the truth that God does not treat sinners as they deserve or harbor his anger forever, but no, he has set all their sins on Jesus. I lay my sins on Jesus. Let's, no, wait, no, no, I, I messed up the tune there the spotless Lamb of God. I messed the tune up there. Oh, it's just adding to the morning that I've had. Sometimes you're the windshield. Sometimes you're the bug. Um, so that may, they all may be one. Just as you and I or one, just as I am in you and you are in me, so that they would be in us, so that the world would know that you sent me. Everything is moving toward everyone knowing that the Son of God gave up his life. Um, well, Pastor Rake, I take that as glory everywhere else up to this point has been the cross of Christ. Son, glory... Father, glorify your name. I would take this as the whole business of God saving sinners. Um, everywhere else in this gospel, the glory of God has been the cross. Now, suddenly in his high priestly prayer, it makes more sense that it would be the, the ascension, the glory, the glory that he had before the foundation of the world. But the, the Jesus who's gloried before the foundation of the world is the Jesus who will die. So that on the last day, he appears as a lamb having been slaughtered. And so, yes, I take this as his cross. And that prayer is answered on the last day where they see him in all his glory and he appears as one who died. And the, the cross affects the unity between believers in Jesus. That is between Jesus and the Father. The cross is the unity between the Father and the Son. They want to save sinners. The cross is the unity between me and you, Pastor Rake, between all of us together. I, I think I'm understanding you. Um, I think we're tracking together. Okay, good. Um, now, again, I'm not going to be upset with anybody who who holds a differing view um, uh, that... Um, uh, That this is the ascension. Because the one who ascended is literally the one who died. That's the glory of the resurrection. The one who rose from the dead is the one who died on Good Friday. That's the comfort. So this unity can't just be we, we sit around and sing Kumbaya. This unity is in that Christ died for you. He died for me. He died for all. That's the unity. That's why we don't see people as what they, um, as how they look. All right. Um, when, 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 um, I'm going to pick on Terry Lynn. When Terry Lynn met me, she didn't see, um, uh, uh, um, a, 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 a chubby white kid. When I met her, I didn't, I didn't see, um, uh, a nice white lady. A nice black lady. Um, I saw her as a sister in Christ. She saw me as a brother in Christ, a younger brother in Christ. I mean, this unity is this, this is why this is the answer to all our problems with race 
and culture and and um, all of it. Stop defining yourself by something you and start defining yourself by him. Your oneness is, is his crossness. Um, all the people who helped us move this week, all the people who helped us move this week, um, they didn't help me move because I'm a nice guy. I'm not a nice guy. They didn't bring food over because we're such nice people. We're not nice people. We have a mean dog um, and a poodle who get into mischief and poop everywhere. They helped us because we're in Christ together. Because Christ died for them. Christ died for us. That's our unity. That's what makes us one. What makes us one is that we didn't decide to agree and to disagree. That's great. That's a start. What makes us one, though, what truly makes us one, when we say dumb things, when we do dumb things, when we are dumb people, is the suffering and death of Christ. The tribalism of my tribe versus your tribe ends in death. It ends in death. One tribe conquers another. The other tribe gets conquered. Always a bitter, bigger fish, um, Obi-Wan. You know, it, and it ends in death. We long for this unity, but the only way this unity is going to be found, the only way our loneliness comes to an end, is in the suffering and death of Jesus. This is the truth that he prays for us to see. And the unity that... It, the unity is in truth, in his words. All right? And it's not that we find, look for the bare necessities, the simple bare necessities. No, it's not that we find the bare necessities to believe and to find unity in. It's that to believe in Jesus, we have unity in the truth. Now, the other things we're going to need to work out. Our differences on baptism and the Lord's Supper, but we work them out trying to work them out to become one, not to try to magnify our differences. But this business of trying to find, um, to try to find some sort of unity by one group being master over the other or lording over the other, Not just mystical union, duplication of, uh, I have no idea on the fly what you're talking about, Rake, but I'm going to figure it out later. <laughs> he's having, um, uh, he's having a profound moment. And when someone as intelligent as Pastor Rake has a profound moment, the rest of us have to catch up later. <laughs> I want you, I want, I want you to learn from this section that it's in the suffering and death of Jesus that we find true unity and true peace. And that's his prayer. Remember earlier, Jesus says, the father loves me because I lay down my life for you. The oneness between the father and the son is that the father sends the son to die. The son dies for sinners. And we're loved in our connection to the Son. That they all may be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they may be one in us. Notice, we don't get God on board with us. God comes and saves us and brings us in to his eternal communion that he has with the Father, between the Father and the Son, in the Lamb being slain. And that tells the world that the Son was sent to save us. The glory that you've given me, I have given to them, that they may be one even as we are one. Everything is connected to and flows from the sun.
I in them, you in me. They then are completely one so that the world may know that you sent me and love them even as you loved me. Love them in the giving up of the Son. The cross is not the mystical union. Um, the cross, the mystical union where the unity occurs is what you're saying. Not denying the mystical union, but that the, here unity is located in the cross. That's what you're saying. That is very evangelical and a fresh perspective. Okay. Sounds great. Um, I don't know how we can be one apart from the suffering and death of Jesus. I don't know how we can be one apart from the suffering and death of Jesus. Not, not sustainable. Not sustainable oneness. I'm going to sin against Terry Lynn. I'm going to fail her. And the, and the hope that I have then is that Christ would, would, would bring about forgiveness, repentance in me and forgiveness in her. And all of this flows from the father's love for the son and all of it show is shown in the suffering and death of Jesus. And that shows us the father's love for us that they may know that you've sent me and love them even as you loved me. How do we know that the Father loves us? The Son gave up his life for us. I mean, it's it's nothing short of miraculous. It's nothing short of, it should bring us to tears. So that no matter how full of poop your day has been, Christ died for me. Christ rose for me. The Father must love me. No matter what else the world may see, no matter how else it looks like in the external circumstances that one bad thing happens and then another bad thing happens and then another bad thing happens and just one bad thing after another and one bad hour after another bad hour, that's not the determining factor on what's going on with us. The cross is the determining factor. The cross shows us that the Father loves the Son the cross shows us that the Father loves us and that the Son loves us too and that we love in tho that love, the love that went through death and hell to save us. And that is the glory and majesty of Almighty God, the glory before the foundation of the world. Father, I desire they also whom you've given me, may be with me where I am to see my glory that you've given me because you have loved me before the foundation of the world. O oh, righteous Father, even though the world does not know you, I know you, and these know that you've sent me, that you've apostled me. So the world doesn't know you, but I know you, and they know, you and I know, we know that the Father sent the Son to save us. And I've made known to them, Erist, I've made known to them your name. And I will make it known. So that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. What? comfort. What unbelievable, unbelievable, unspeakable. Oh, the depths of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are your judgments and your paths beyond, beyond figuring out for from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. The Father, they, the world doesn't know you but I know you and they know that you've sent me and I've made known to them your name in my suffering and in my death and in my resurrection 
that, and I will continue to make it known to them. I will show them your love in the next two chapters. And in the rest of their lives. And in my life too. Who's the president isn't going to change that? Who's running the government's not going to change that? My sins aren't going to change that. My neighbor's sins aren't going to change that. Some dog poop isn't going to change that in my life. I've made known to them your name. And I will make it known. And I will continue to make it known. That the love with which you loved me would be in them, would be in you. I believe that we often try to better, to be better than Christ with whom we are in. It's chasing our tail. Exactly, Terry Lynn, exactly. Exactly. What? Follow the love. The Father loves the Son. The Son is sent to die. The Son shows us the love of the Father and draws us into that love that we might be one so that everyone would know that this Jesus died and rose again for us. Have a great day. Remember, though, Remember, go to higherthings.org slash giving and give today. A tax-deductible gift keeps um, a youth organization that is all about the gospel. All about the gospel. Keeps us rolling. I want to make sure that that's the right slash giving. Yep, that's the one. Give today. If you love the Bible study, you like it in your ears, go ahead and give today. Have a blessed day. Um, you are loved. You were loved before the foundation of the world. And you have been drawn in, dragged into the love between the Father and the Son, and given that love, and made one in that love. And that's not up to you. Um, you were given to the given to the Son through the Father. Have a blessed day. I'll see you tomorrow for all the best chapters of all time, 18 and 19. Oh, it's bloody good. Literally. See you tomorrow.